Hello, family. So I wanted to answer a quick question um, that I received. Uh, one that I think is apt, actually. I think I'm surprised uh, someone hasn't asked me before. Um, I was approached by somebody who actually watched one of my videos. And um, it wasn't on YouTube. But they asked me you know, why do I rely on Bobby Hemet so much? And or should I say not rely, but why do I reference Bobby Hemet so much when he's not necessarily a reliable source? Um and my answer to them and my answer to you is this. Bobby Hemet, to many people, is not a reliable source. Um and I think from a academic standpoint, maybe, you know, that's that's a safe assumption is that he is not a reliable source because he is not ap academically inclined. But the reason why I reference him so much um, is because, one, Bobby Hammett has a knack of saying things that are fundamentally, fundamentally, fundamentally true, meaning when you get down to the root of the of all the information that you can get to the um, root of, those truths hold up. That which remains obviously has to be the truth. And he has a knack of doing that. Secondly, Bobby Hammett, for all of his failings, cannot be, cannot be called an idiot. The guy actually is well enough read. I don't want to say well read because, you know, he, even he admits he doesn't read all the books. Um, that he has, he, he, he researches, which a lot of people do that, but, um, he has the knowledge enough to make the type of statements, which he makes. Now, are some of the statements that he makes, um, going to always be correct? No, not everybody. People aren't right a hundred percent of the time. Um, and some of the things that he says, yeah, you know, even I look at him and go, eh, that might be just a little bit, you know, too much. But what I always have to remind myself and what I reminded this person because they were not um, a particular fan of Mr. Hammond is that Bobby Hammond, people like Bobby Hammond, Phil Valentine, um, what is it, uh, C. Freeman L. and the like, these guys were talking about a lot of things that today we take for granted as truths and as you know, assumptions of being true. They were talking about these things in the 1990s and in the 1980s when they had to look like they were absolutely drug-crazed lunatics. I mean, there are things that Bobby Hammett talked about where I'm just, you know, back in like 95 and 96, where I'm looking at them and going, okay, the people sitting in that room had to look at you like you were just absolutely insane. And yet, a lot of what he's talking about seems to be coming true. I've done vid I've done a video on on the prophetic nature of Bobby Hammond. Um, and how some of his timetables are probably a little bit off. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why I, I do reference him, because he does say things that are massively important and need to be talked about and need to be talked about. Not everything he says is a gold mine, but a lot of what he says is really, really good. You have to, you know, with Bobby Hammett, because he was really like a people's type of a scholar where he 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 talked in um, not in jargon, but he talked in. Um, ordinary language, you have to be able to take that ordinary language and synthesize it to understand what he's trying to tell you. But a lot of what he he has said, man, it blows my mind. <clears throat> it absolutely blows my mind. And in fact, um, I have a number of the books that he um, referenced, and I've gone through and I've gotten some of the musical things that he has suggested going and getting. Um, one of them is the Nutcracker Suite by, uh, 
who was it by Duke Ellington, Duke Ellington, um, which is really, it's, it's a good piece of music. It's a good piece of music. Um, but that's one of the reasons, that's a primary reason why I do deal with him. Plus he, especially in the nineties, especially in the nineties, when things got a little bit more international and a little bit more hazy, his observations weren't always as dead on as they could have been. But in the nineties, there was this political realism that he often uh, expressed. And a lot of the things that he was talking about then are incredibly apt now. Now. Now also, to not take anything away from him, there are things that he started, that he talked about in like 2002, 2003, 2004, especially when it comes to Iraq, that, you know, changed the way it... The only way that I can look at it is like white folks had to get a hold of some of his stuff because some of the things which he was talking about in 202, 203, 204, and 205, I seen repeated by white people. And I thought these were white folks' ideas in 211 and 212 and 210. And then when I heard him say it, I'm like, wait a minute, whoa. And then I heard the context which he was talking about it. Like um, um, the idea of the government going into Iraq for spiritual reasons, that there is a spiritual underlying underlining to what they were doing. This is something that um, I think it was Alex Jones and um, David Icke really like took off and ran with. They took off and ran with that. And I know Alex Jones, it's like, oh, he's crazy, he's crazy, he's crazy. Uh, there, Alex Jones is probably a con man, but even con men tell the truth sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. They got to have some truth in there to make themselves believable. But, but, because, yeah, <laughs> I just thought about that. I'm like, wait a minute, they're probably looking at me like, did you just use Alex Jones for a reference? Yeah, I'm not a follower of Alex Jones, by the way. But, um... The, those those type of statements, I have I've even seen repeated by by lesser known people. In fact, that's what gave them a lot of um, legitimacy in a lot of people's minds is the fact that um, a lot of other people who are not Alex Jones were repeating them. So you know, and actually, um, Phil Valentine mentioned that in one of his videos where he stated that uh, there was this white dude who started shooting other white people and when uh after i think they killed him i'm pretty confident they killed him um the cops did they killed him and so when they went to his place and they started searching for you know evidence and what have you they found a whole box of bobby hammett um uh phil valentine and them's tapes and so they started talking to people who are around Phil Valentine and them, um, and wondering kind of like, okay, you know, why would this person want to go around and kill white people, this white guy go around and kill white people, you know, after watching these tapes. So, um, I, I forget what the reason may have been, but you know, I don't believe there was a reason. Anyway, um, that's the power of those tapes. And those tapes obviously have gotten into the hands of white people. Um, I don't typically see white people commenting on Bobby Hammond's stuff. But, but I have heard things that he has said repeated by white people. So I know that information is out there. And I also, I've heard things that Phil Valentine has said, you know, repeated by people. There is, um... Phil Valentine, a couple of years ago, I want to say 2016, did an interview, and he made a statement on that interview, and a year later, I heard verbatim something that he said in that interview, that statement that he said in that interview, come out of a white person's mouth. Now, that could be coincidence, that could be coincidence, but I'm going to suggest it's probably not. Anyway, so um, that's kind of why I do rely on Bobby Hemet. Um, also, the guy does give you an incredible library, man. You can find 
so much information from the stuff that he gives you. And if you follow up with it, and if you do like a researcher is supposed to do, which is dig with it, you can find out a lot of stuff. Absolutely a lot of stuff. Um, one second. All right, family, so I'm back. Um, you know, I I often say that Bobby Hammett, or I think I've said before that um, Bobby Hammett has, um, he gives you um, a lot of bibliography. Uh, <laughs> bibliography, sorry, um, that he gives you a lot of references and a lot of books. But you know what I've never done? I've never shown you any of these books. And I have purchased probably five or six dozen of these books, maybe, and I'd probably bet more. Uh, I'd, I'd bet more. But so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you some of that bibliography. I'm going to give you some of those references. Um, mind you now, um, I actually have a um, playlist, not a playlist, a book list on Amazon comprised of over 700 books that Bobby Hammond has either recommended or books that have been related to books that he has recommended. Um, and he has, he's given, he's, he's, Say what you want to about the man. He gives you a lot of information and a lot of books. I just wish he referenced um, and cited his work a little bit better. That's the only thing. Only thing. Anyway, so I have a number of books right here that um, I'm going to show you now. And I'm going to save that one because that's one of my favorites. Um, this is a book that I actually bought before I saw Bobby Hemet. Um, mention it, uh, and I read this actually before I heard you know him mention it. I think I heard him mention it in like twenty fifteen. I want to say it might have been twenty fourteen, but I bought it before that actually. So this is a good book, Shamanic Wisdom of Egypt by Nikki Scully and Linda Star Wolf. There you go. Okay, um, as you can tell, I have markers in here. Uh, it, it'll, this, this is a powerful book. So we'll start off with something powerful. This is a powerful book, um, especially for people who want to do some meditations and stuff um, and work on the mind um, with an Egyptian flair. This is a good book. All right, so that's number one. Number two, this book... If I'm not mistaken, he mentioned this. I got this in 2016. It's called The Dreaming Universe. I haven't utilized this one as much as I wish I had. Um, it is by a guy named Fred Allen Wolf, PhD. Fred Allen Wolf. There you go. That's his name. That's the name of the book. I haven't utilized that one as much as I thought I would. Um, save that one. This, um, for black people, you may feel a little bit off with this one, but there is still really good information in here which can be utilized. It's called The Pagan Book of Days. The Pagan Book of Days. And um, there's his name, Nigel. Nigel Pinnock. Um, it's... It's a decent book. This is one that I don't really use much, but um, it was interesting when I first got it. It it teaches you a lot about paganism and their festivals throughout the year. Um, this is one that he used to mention a lot, and it took me a while to actually find a really good copy of this one that I really liked. Um, it is by I K. Tamni, T-A-I-M-N-I, -I. Um, Man, God, and the Universe, Man, God, and the Universe, all right, so um, he used to mention this one a lot, and um, this is another one that I thought I'd be using a lot more, and I just haven't. This one... I actually got, and I don't believe he mentioned it, but
But I'm going to give it to you nonetheless because spirit is there. There you go. And there's your tie. Uh, there's who wrote it. All right. It's a really good book, actually. Um, thorough, man. Thorough, thorough, thorough. Get ready to have your mind blown with that one. Um, trying to keep these all together. Ah, and this from the nineties to like the mid 2000s, the first decade of the 2000s, he mentioned this one a lot. So I finally got it. Okay. And just to let you know, this one is very interesting. Um, this one is very interesting. Uh, it, you got to really have an open mind to deal with this one, to really, because it makes, it presents some information like, you know, a, one of the first couple of books in here. It presents man in a very unique way and you really gotta it messes with your mind if you ain't ready so you know but it's a good book but tread you know only get to this one if you're gonna get it get it but don't get to it until your mind is ready okay um this is the one that i was saving because this is a book that he said actually kind of ch it, it changed his whole life um you remember not too long ago, um, Kanye West was running around talking about Donald Trump had dragon energy and that he had dragon energy. Well, people who have studied Bobby Hammond knows that Bobby Hammond had a series of um, uh, lectures where he dealt with dragon energy. He was actually talking about dragon energy. And I can't recall if Serious Times put the videos out, I want to say they put it out prior to Kanye West. One of them was called Dragon Time, I think. And the other one, I can't remember what the other one was called. But anyway, um, it, it spoke a lot about this energy and it was very intriguing. And I think in one of those, in one of them, he mentioned this book. And I went out and I got it and it's... It is what it says it is, man. This is a book that will, this will put something on you. I, I'm not even joking. It's a powerful book. But the cool thing is, it's not one that's going to play with your mind or that it's going to take your mind to open up. This is a book for the heart. Love is a Fire. That's the name of the book. Love is a Fire. And that is... Your artist, your artist. <laughs> that's your um, that's your writer there. Llewellyn Vaguely or Vogley, Vonley, Vonley, Vonley. Sorry, Vonley. All right, and then the book that I really set aside for later because this is a powerful one. He mentioned this in one of his other lectures. Um, it is um. Uh, it's that. The Mystic Vision. And there's a whole group of these books. The Mystic Vision. There's a whole group of these books. This deals with a lot of different things. So, you know, kind of, uh, be ready. Be ready. So, that's that. That's that set. I got more. <laughs> yep, I got more. So, this is a book that he mentioned in one of his lectures. I actually bought a number of books on Tantra because of this lecture. Um, this is called The Soul of Sex. And if I had thought about it, I would have got the one Tantra book on sex because it's really a good book. And in fact... That book, which I don't know where it is at this moment. Oh, and this is the, um, that's the, uh, 
author. But that book actually explained to me why Sheldon from the Big Bang, when he referred to sex, he called it coitus. Coitus is a tantric word. It's a tantric word. It's a very deep show, man. Um, this is another one that he recommended, which kind of goes, it's kind of connected to this. Um, it's this one. Okay. Robert J. Miller. It is, uh, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. So, that's two. This is another one that he mentioned, and, hmm. I just turned to something that I wanted to remember. Um, this is another one, and this is one that's really, this one is powerful. Um, it is called Eastern Body, Western Mind. And I can't, I think I discovered this one in 2016 also. Um, but it really is something. It, man. So that one, get that one. I mean, get that one. And uh, this, this is another reason why I quote Bobby Hammond so much, man. He gives you a lot of stuff on psychology and philosophy. That one. Parallel myths. Parallel myths. Okay. Um, I'll save that. This one... I uh, can't really give you that one. Anyway, um, this is another one that he... That's another one. And I th this one is really interesting because of how it treats the, um, uh, the Book of Revelations. I mean, you may not believe it, but it is... It really gives you a new way of looking at the Book of Revelations. This is an interesting book. This. Okay. Recall how I said that this book, the Complete Gospels, was connected to this book, the Gnostic Scriptures. Okay? So you had them two together, right? Here's the third piece to this puzzle. Not really a puzzle, but here's the third piece. There is a Jewish man who took all of the supposed New Testament uh, Gospels that are written in Hebrew, and he retranslated them from the original Hebrew. This is the book that came out of his work. The original New Testament. The original New Testament. And again, I wouldn't have even known about this book if it wasn't for Bobby Hammett. If it was not, you know, for Bobby Hammett. And it's, it's, you know, like I said, that's the third part here. You got this one and then you got these two. So the three together, booyah. There's your Gospels. Um, and then this one, which he mentioned, and for all of you brains out there, get this book, Chaos Theory Tamed. Every black home should have this book. To be honest with you, most of the books that I presented today, every black home should have, but this one particularly, your children, oh, sorry, your children should be learning this. Your children, when they are eight and seven and six, should be learning this. And they should be learning it 
because I'm going to get his name wrong, so I'm, I can't even say his name. It was an African who developed the grand unified theorem. Not theory, theorem. The difference between a theory and theorem, thank you to um, uh, Philippe Shock Matthews for this. The difference between a theory and a theorem is a theory has not yet been proved. A theorem, a theorem has been. A theorem has been. So, you know, it was an African who did that. We need to be studying this. And there was another book that I was looking for that I couldn't find, but I might leave for a minute and see if I can find it. Um, another book that Bobby Hammond ironically didn't talk about, but it's actually well known among UFO um, uh, groups. And that is called The Lines on the Landscape. The Lines on the Landscape. Okay? And there's your, there's your writers. Now, the book that I said that I couldn't show you, um, is a book by a man named Israel Regardi. And the ancestors are telling me to go ahead and do it, that it is, um, it's time because it is open. It's free. People can go and they can find it. So why not show it? Um, that's the book. That's the book. Okay. All right. Let me go and quickly see if I can find this other book because this is another important one. Okay, so I was actually able to find it. Um, here's the book that I was talking about. And ironically, this is another book that I purchased. Um, I purchased this book in 2006 during my own spiritual awakening. And it's a deep book. It is a deep, absolutely mind-stunningly deep book. It is scientific. And this is another one, truthfully, that all black families, you know, I should do a video about that. Books that black families should have in their in their possession. Um, but this is another book that, like all black families, black children should know this book by the time they're 10. And you're going to, you know, those of you who read this book, you're going to go, huh, what? <laughs> by t what? But seriously, this is the level. This is the level of intelligence that our kids do have. This is the level. I listened to a guy, um, his channel is Ancestral Productions, and from listening to what he's been saying for the last three or four years, um, I discovered him in 2016, um, I became a real big fan of his, um, basically from the moment that I heard his uh, videos. Uh, from listening to what he's saying, he really matches up to what I feel and what I have found with black people. Particularly, there's a book that I mentioned in one of my other videos, um, a black, uh, about black children and their culture. Don't have it here. Wish I did. But um, we we have an incredibly deep mind. We just don't tap into it most of the time. So here's the book. It is called The Holographic Universe. And again, it's it's a mind blower. It is. You're you're going to learn a lot about. Um, physics, you're going to learn a lot about science, you're going to learn a lot about a lot of things. And you have to be ready to do your work with it. But it will reward you. This is why I say children should be taught this, because they have the time and the mind to conceptualize what this actually means. I think sometimes if I had been, you know, this book, I think this came out in 99. But if I was taught this in my 20s, which, like I said, I got this, I was like in my mid-20s when I got this book. Um, but if this was the underpinning of my of, of a lot of my educational basis, the way that my mind would have worked. And I know you're thinking like, well, wait a minute, you got it in your mid-20s, but I didn't study it like I should have. It's a great book, though. Um, and then a, one more book that I found that I got to share with you. Again, um, 2014, Bobby Hammett mentioned this in a, I was watching one of his lectures online, 
And what was so amazing about this book is um, when, when the X-Files came back, and it's it's so incredible how it worked. 2016, when the X-Files came back, a friend of mine at work was talking to me, and I mentioned that I love the X-Files, and he said, oh, so I guess you're going to be watching the reboot. And I go, huh? Didn't even hear about it. So when it came back, they actually had a story. And oh, I'm going to rant for just a minute after this point. <laughs> I'm going to make it short. Um, they had a story which dealt with this type of energy. And the clueless, supposedly fans of X-Files stopped Chris Carter, who is the creator of the X-Files, from, you know, they criticized him into changing the structure of the second season of, of the X-Files reboot. And that is, by all accounts, what killed the show. Um, at least presently. If they had let him keep going with, you know, the way in which he was going, which was incredible, man. There was so much metaphysical information in it. It would have worked a lot better. Anyway, the book that I'm talking about is that. This is another one that especially young people would like. Makes you kind of wonder. So... There's some books, and that's one of, you know, those, those are reasons why I do um, rely on Bobby Hammett. Um, yeah, there's some books. I'm looking right now across the room at my collection, um, but I think I'm just going to leave this off here. I think that's what I'm going to do, because I could just keep going. But there you go. There's some books, guys. I hope they help. Peace.